before exam we had learned about array we had learned one d array two d array i think uh, if you recall the characterization of array it's nothing but a list of homogeneous items or a collection of homogeneous items and means collection of same type of items stored in a contiguous memory location so same type of item means if array elements if one of the array elements is integer then others have to be integer if one of them is float others will be float so you cannot mix up you cannot uh, put different types of elements in it okay so similarly if one of the elements is character then other elements have to be character so that kind of array is known as oh, there is some problem that kind of array is known as character array that means its collection of characters instead of integers we had some different examples with integer arrays but and not necessarily all the arrays will be will store the integer variables so how this type of character array is also known as string but string as character array has little bit of difference difference i will explain the difference one by one just one, only one minor difference is there because string let us write what string is is a character array which is terminated by null character null means this character this character is known as null okay now what is the significance of the null character with respect to a character array that means it indicates end of string okay it indicates end of string that means it should not go up to infinity although some languages provide bound checking some languages do not so whatever in while we design algorithm we don't have to bother about what kind of thing is going on or uh, how we need to check uh, up to which uh, the array runs or not or up to which the array will be considered or not so that kind of bound checking is Uh, strict for some languages but for some languages for example in c language there is no such bound checking so even if you declare array of size 7 you can also access the uh, eight element hmm. although it is garbage but uh, if you try to access your compiler will not throw any type of error okay so but uh, when you are dealing with the string it should be some valid uh, characters such as your name such as your address any alpha numeric character like your roll number different types of things are there ultimately in presence of null character is very much required because otherwise you cannot uh, identify that in up to which your string ends or what is the string if you cannot bound the end of the string you cannot get what the string is because you have to run up to infinity that is not possible so string is a character array which is terminated by the null character if you remember this statement up to this the characterization of string is enough you know character array what character array is and, and now i have uh, just introduced what null character is purpose of the null character now when i discuss uh, different string activities 
we'll get into the detail of this null character. Now, if I uh, declare one fundamental character variable, so we declare in this way character ch. What does it mean? ch is a memory variable and it is of one byte. Sorry, coming up on you. One byte memory variable that means it can hold up to one byte information and address is ampersand ch, whatever. It may have some content like a, b, any symbol that is nothing but the character. Now, if I like to print or read, for reading, we had used, I am recalling some information because we haven't use that kind of thing for a long time. So that's why I am recalling. So we read in this way, you notice that part, percent C, because it's not an integer. So that's why percent D is not used. Similarly for printing, the, it is about a simple character, not character array, okay. So I think there should not be any problem to understand it. You have already used this type of instruction for integer where you have used percent. So let me highlight that part because that is very important. Uh, we often get confused, okay, this part. Don't get confused. So this is about ordinary character variable. Now in character array, how do we use it or how do we write? We declare in this way. Or string, better to say. I am alternatively writing string because although there is a little bit of difference, but almost they are same. If some language provides a special data type string like Java, I think. Some of you have used, but here we don't have any special data type for string. Uh, we have to use. Sir, in C++ plus also. Uh, in C++, plus plus, there is no such special data type. Okay. You have to use character array. No, sir. Uh, there is a special data type called string in C++. Plus plus. Uh, C++, plus plus, is it? Yes, sir. Actually, I, I haven't used it, but maybe in, in, in nowadays they have built up a version like this, but in earlier version, when I used it, C++, that time uh, there was no data type. Maybe they are trying to uh, match with the Java. Okay. So that's why they have introduced a special data type. It's not a big issue. If you create one data type and put it in the library, then this, these things will be available. But usually when I used C++ for the first time, that time there were, there was no uh, data type for string. I think it was an older version that you used. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe. But in C, we use in this way. Let's say C is a character array. So we have to use in this way. Actually. Just uh, compare uh, ordinary character variable and character array. You, you, you can very easily understand because uh, you, you know already the concept of array. So here actually 10 consecutive bytes are allocated inside a memory. And this indices are 0, 1, 2, 3, like normal array. Okay. But until we push any element into it, so we cannot predict where the garbage is, where the null character is actually. So for that, the 
usually we we can do this but usually this is not the way to declare a string we declare using with we actually declare with initialization let's say the string is okay move on to next page because it is getting bit bigger Let's say it's West Bengal, I like that. I I S T seven. So what happens if I write in this way? It is twenty. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now after that, every character is null. So that means up to this, we'll consider the end of. Character array or the end of string, but how do we take it runtime? How do we take it that such that user supplies input and that will be inserted into the string? Okay. So runtime, when I try to take, it has two methods. Usually, scanf does the job for character or for integer, but there is some problem with the scanf. I mean, what happens? actually data type for string or it is is percent is hmm. uh, sorry format specifier for string is percent is so using scanf if i write that print a enter a string actually input and output is very important at the beginning if, if you are master at taking string into memory and uh, displaying that string then you can do any type of processing on it processing is not a big issue if you can very easily manage but at the beginning it becomes very challenged with input and output now how do we write percent is If I write in this way, actually name of the sorry, this is not str, this is ch. Uh, I have written in this. If I write in this way and try to print the string after that. we can we get only this part waste that means you if we use can f to read a string then sir i'm sorry here m% is not used because string name will be considered as the address address of the string so while taking input the address is also implied here we, we don't have to use okay if we read the character by character that means you if we use one for loop 
and then uh, we read character by character then definitely you have to use ampersand but here actually the string name it is the base address it is also called the base address of the string Okay. That means the address of the first element. So name, if I write C H, that is equivalent to M percent C H zero. So if you write this also, uh, that is also okay. So in this way, actually we read string. But problem with this type of reading is that we read up to space. If there is a space, it will stop there and consider as the end of the string. It will not take the string after space. That is the problem with this type of statement. So, if you like, if we stick to scanner, then we have to write. This instruction, okay. Scanner. We we cannot write percentage. Rather than we will write care new line. Is then th. For reading full string, then if you try to print, it will print West Bengal the full string. Otherwise, it will print. Up to the space. So if your string is just one letter long, like that, let's say your first name, hmm. then you may alternatively use scanner percentage, no problem. But if your string is made of multiple letters, then uh, multiple words, hmm, then maybe uh, it is not very good strategy to use scanner. Or if we like to use, we have to use this complicated syntax of scanner. Now, uh, this type of syntax is a little bit difficult for handling. So uh, we we usually use some easier syntax, which is known as getes and putes. Actually, I am supplying C H because otherwise we, we cannot understand uh, what is the argument for getes. So in getes, through getes, we can read the entire string. Like uh, we have to write first print it, entire string, then we have to write. Get is ph, and after that we have to print put is ph or put strings ph. Even if you use get is, you can alternatively use print it. That means print it is. Equivalent to putes, but you cannot say that scanf is always equivalent to getes. Okay, so I have already explained the difference because difference is if you are whether you are scanning just one word or multiple words. Okay. So this is uh, some basic information related to string. That means how can we read a string or how can we write a string? And one thing I just have mentioned earlier, this is how uh, we take the string. 
static energy. That means static initialization of the string. We are directly supplying the value of the string in our code. But sometimes we need to use, we need to collect the string from user, and for that we have to use some dynamic initialization. That is using putes and scanner. But alternatively, you have you can also do this using printf and scanner. You have to use some trick there. So these two things are very important for string operation. There is some problem with this type of Okay, so at least we know how to read a string and how to print a string. Now we have to know the different operations with the string. Okay. What are these operations? First, we will discuss counting. Number of characters in a string. That means length of a string. Okay. So there is a special library function, strlen. And if you supply the string here, and its return is the function, return of the function is integer. So it actually returns number of characters before null. Okay. Including space, it returns number of characters. So this is the function of str alien function. This is the purpose of using str alien. But uh, problem is that in your exam, in most of the cases, it is asked to develop a function that counts number of characters in a string or that finds uh, number of elements in a string or like that. So that's, that means you have to develop a function or you have to develop a logic. You are not allowed to use the library function. This is used when you do some uh, programming, when you do some programming with other types of things or like that. But usually when string operation is demanded in your question, so that is often it is said, uh, most of the cases it is said that you have to develop without using any library functions. Okay. Now, how do we do this? Without library function means you have to exploit the logic behind developing string operation. If we know what is the logic behind it, we may not have to use the library function. We can develop our own function. Just the logic behind it is required. Let's say x to the power of y. You know that you can use power function. That will compute x to the power y, but if you know the logic, that means uh, it is nothing but the x is multiplied with x y times x x x in this way. So if you uh, actually prepare one loop, where inside that you, you simulate that multiplication operation, then maybe you can develop a function like power. Okay. So in this way, in this approach, you have to do this. Now, how do we compute the length of a string? Let's say string is again, I take the same example.
consider i have already collected the string from user so i am not writing input and output instruction that will be too boring because just like this before you put s get s and put s you collect the string from user now how do we actually the diagram becomes a little bit clumsy so what is the problem with that kind of drawing Usually people do it using array, but I do it using pointer because pointer in this case it will be very easy for manipulating a string. So I'm just writing a logic. Uh, let's say you, you, your string is this one. For that time being, I am writing str20 equal to West Bengal. So STR means this. Now we have to take one pointer. Okay, that will move up to the end. Logic is that it will start from here and it will move up to the end. End means it will compare the character uh, constantly, and uh, if it is not null, then it will proceed. Otherwise, it falls. In this way, actually, you have to run one logic and. When the logic runs within a loop, we have to keep one counter updating, okay. and that counter has to be set zero from the uh, beginning. Okay, so at the beginning, the counter value should be zero, and as long as the pointer proceeds to the next position, the counter incremented by one. You try to understand this logic is very simple, but if you can understand, you can do. Any type of string program. You have to know how to access the string. If you are an expert at this, so any type of it's very simple example, but sometimes some example with the strings are very complicated. But also it is complicated you can manage. So let us take one pointer. Sorry, uh, and he, I write here p equal to ch because ch is nothing but the base address of the string. Or if again I am making the mistake, p equal to str here because name of the string is str. So it is base address. You can alternatively write also that p equal to ampersand str0 these things are same these two things are same okay you can write also this no problem now what is the, what does it mean when p contains the address of the first address p points here at the beginning Now we have to run p up to null. So while star p not equal to null, p plus plus. So what happens 
p is right here and star p not equal to null it is true then p comes here again star p not equal to null p moves in this way actually p moves up to null so when p reaches here actually it falls the loop terminates this is the fundamental logic but what is the use of this logic in this case we will take one integer variable we will declare on integer variable here let's say this variable is count and we initialize that variable to zero now what happens we will increment also the value of count when p advances so let us let us test this example hmm. initially count is zero count and star p initially star p is w count is zero here at this line now star p not equal to null so it enters into the loop p plus plus that means star p becomes e and count becomes one then actually the image will be like this not image will be like this here next again it checks star p not equal to null it is true then it becomes s and count increases two similarly it becomes p it becomes three so uh, when it is it is three then uh, it, it becomes space it becomes four then it becomes b it becomes five then again e it becomes six it n it seven then g it becomes 8 then a it becomes 9 l it becomes 10 null if when it becomes null then it doesn't enter okay then what is the value of count it is 10 actually let me count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so there is one character sort i think this is because actually we are starting count from zero when there is one character here okay so if we have to do this then we have to initialize you have to increment count first and then increment this otherwise we have to start it from it one one uh, that is the problem actually i am running this just otherwise you cannot understand this mechanism uh, whether we have to start from one or zero that is sometimes it is a confusion so I think this example actually avoid the confusion. So if I start it from one, so it will be eleven after that. So so it will count number of elements in a string. Okay. So this is the logic, and you have to put that logic into a, a separate function, and you can call that function no problem. Uh, it will be like str alien this function so i am not 
discussing the entire C programming code. For I am just discussing the logic, so it it should be your responsibility after that class. It's not an assignment, but do it by yourself. You try to do it by yourself. Try to simulate or prepare program and try to run. Okay. Uh, if you are successful, then uh, hopefully you will understand. See. Now next operation is. Copy a string from another. There is a library function strcpy, but I will not discuss it. You will. Uh, Find the example for strcpy. I will just discuss the logic behind it. Okay, because in using library function, uh, if you provide two strings, then from then from one string to another. Uh, the content all the elements will be copied but i am just discussing the logic behind it let's say there are two strings okay let me initialize one string first guys let's say this is india whatever and str2 i am going to keep the copy of it by some operation so i am not initializing this string so what happens inside memory str1 and str2 will be created str1 contains the string india but str2 contains garbage values of character so i haven't assigned anything in it now how do we copy the all characters of str1 into str2 we have to declare two character pointers i think star p and star q here actually better to write p in small letter otherwise now we have to set p here and set q here so p equal to str1 like before and q equal to str2 so what happens p will be here and q will be here now we have to run a loop and inside that loop we have to take one element from p and put the element into q similarly you have to advance p and take one element from uh, str1 and put it into str2 in this way actually you have to run up to null character if we do it then we have to we, we claim that all the string is copied including null you have to copy otherwise end of the string is not determined but there is one special library function strcpy which 
does this operation but i will not discuss that thing because very easily you can find the syntax of strcpy you will check it after this after that class uh, because in one line you can copy one string to another but in exam uh, if it is advised that do not use library function you are not supposed to do it but if it is not advised uh, if it is given with some other application then maybe you can use no problem you check the instruction always but i am considering a scenario where i cannot use str cpy directly but if if the such freedom is available you don't need to do in this way okay so p and q now why star p not equal to null so what do i do maybe it is uh, i'm writing one logic but maybe it is sometimes it is not correct so we will rectify it because i haven't memorized anything just i am i will copy the content of star p into star q so ultimately it will be star q equal to star p now you have to advance p but most of you people do one mistake that along with the advancement of p you do not increment also q but that is also required otherwise in a same position you will uh, updating the characters okay. so you have to also advance q plus plus so let's check what happens uh, i is star star p it is i not equal to null so i copied here then n p comes here then n copy n is copied here then p advances q advances then d is copied here then i then a and when it is null then what happens it cannot copy it cannot get into this loop so as a result in this tree there is no such end so we have to explicitly put the end that means q is not advanced here but p is advanced here okay in our situation because no actually i am little bit wrong with this kind of thing when you are advancing p you are also advancing q so after copying a p is p is advanced to this position as well as q is also advanced to this position but it cannot copy the null character because uh, it cannot enter into this loop that is problem so after that after end of this loop you have to explicitly write star q equal to null okay so check it after that if you write put a str2 and put a str1 you will get the same string because string is already copied how much time is left okay till 10 minutes left okay so this is the logic from copy, logic of copying a string now concatenation next operation is concatenation concatenation means combining two strings together that means place a string after the end of another string so that is kind of thing so let's say one string is very taking very small string that it will be easier for you to understand 
five lane stream. Let's say it is dog. And okay, uh, do not make you should not make the string so small. Whether you make it up to ten. There is some same problem. Let's say this thing contains cat. Okay. So this is string one and string two. Now after concatenation, and if you if we like to keep it in a same string, that means after dog, if I like to append string two, that means cat. That is also okay. But some people do it in in different string. That means in a third string, we do concatenation. So I think it will be much better for you to understand. So uh, let us do it in a third string. Okay. But you can also, for efficient execution of the program, you can also do it in a same string. That will uh, consume less memory. This memory is not required if we can do this. But at the same time, there is a problem of overwriting. That means original string is not available. When you concatenate, the, it becomes a new string. Okay. So if this string is required later, then you cannot use it. That is the problem. So I am not initializing it because this will be the output. Now, what is the job? We need to set pointers. Okay. So first of all, we have to copy the elements of str1 into str3. And then we have to copy the element of str2 into str3. The logic is very simple. So let us consider two pointers, P and Q. P is set to str1. Now, we do the same thing while tar p not equal to null p plus plus uh, no actually i need to do from assignment first tar p not equal to null we have to assign star q and this star q. But before that, we have to set q. str 3. So q is here and p is here. So star Q equal to star P, that means it will come here, then it will come here, then it will come here, and P plus plus Q plus plus. This is the first step when I copied this string. So it becomes here after that. It becomes and it becomes also in this position. So this is after end of this loop. Then we have to set P 
after this you have to write p equal to str 2 so what happens p becomes here and now we have to copy all the elements into here okay so again you have to run the same loop while star p not equal to null star q equal to star p p plus plus u plus plus so all the elements are copied here and then it will point here you try to understand here actually uh, we have to explicitly set zero after that so star q this is after the loop so in this way actually we do concatenation okay using pointer it is very easy to handle because if you draw one diagram on the side so using pointer it is very nice to handle otherwise using array also you can do this but for array you need to compute different addresses that means uh, when you complete this one then you have to increment uh, this size with the original one so in this way actually you have to do but if you use pointer it will be very easy because pointer can be move back and forth and it can be positioned at the particular place so this is string concatenation similarly you can also compare if two strings are equal or not tell me what can be the logic for comparison because maybe i, I don't know uh, how much time is left uh, it is 10:54 i think what should be the logic for comparison two strings sir every element should be in one piece sir ha every element should match with the first element should match with first every element should match that is one of the concern but there are some other factors maybe first of all you may check if two lengths are equal or not okay if they are not equal length if lengths are equal there is a possibility that two strings are equal but if they are not then you can directly conclude that two strings are not equal that is one of the factor and in length then you have to check each and every character if there is a mismatch you can throw error that this is not equal something okay but sometimes we like to do some lexicographic ordering that means uh, if we arrange in a dictionary which comes first okay so using lexicographic ordering uh, if yeah, a string comes another string then uh, it's it's if two strings are equal then we'll return zero otherwise we'll return one or minus one okay if if it is before if the string is before then it is one otherwise it is minus one that that thing i, I will discuss i may I, i don't have that much time i think so if first of all before getting into this problem uh, you study this 
library function str cmp okay string compare it provides three output 0 1 and minus 1 okay so what you have suggested that is okay but we will compare the string letter by letter or symbol by symbol and if there is a mismatch we will conclude that two strings are not equal that is okay but sometimes uh, by checking the first letter also we can do this if first letters are not equal then it is also not equal and another thing is a string may be substring of another tree string okay String may be substring of another. By checking the first letter, how can we say that it is equal or not? Changing. By checking the first letter, how can we say that? Means, uh, uh, let's say the string starts with A and this string starts with N, like that. Okay, okay. So we can also do this, but not necessarily first letter. Sometimes first letters are also same. Uh, so after some times you will get that there is a difference okay. but problem is that if uh, one string is belongs to another string okay let's say where the, this these are not equal i am writing this together with the, without space and equal so first strings are not matching, no problem, these strings are not, but if you are, the operation is a little bit different, let's say, that if you are asked to find out if a string is present within another string, then what should be the logic? Inside not equal, equal is there. So how can you test that a particular string is available within another string? That is a similar type of problem, finding substring. Okay. Can you guess what can be the logic? Any guess? Sir, then initial words. <laughs> initial words. No, it's not necessarily initial word. It cannot be always the suffix. Sometimes it can yes, be the length. Uh, length. No, you can conclude directly that these two things are not equal. That is okay. You can very easily do this. But um, if a string is present within another string, how can you check? That means presence of substring. This is different operation. Presence of substring. Inside not equal, I think equal is available. Let's say one string is go, another string is going like that. Other than initial <laughs> one, hmm. but if your string is undergo like this, then sorry, this is anything. It means it can be suffix, prefix, whatever. It may not, not always uh, suffix or prefix. Sometimes in the middle, that string may be available. Okay. So how can you check that a particular string is available inside another string? Okay, so think about this type of problems. Try to solve by yourself. Uh, if you find it, then the next day you will tell me the logic. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody.